So now I want you to focus your attention here, right, on this area, okay? We see the spleen channel. Follow me here. The spleen channel I'm going to try to do here in yellow for you. And you remember that I told you that it crosses anterior to the liver channel, yes? So here's our spleen channel running up the anterior medial thigh, if we can. Um, I'd like to make that, here we go. Here's a liver channel. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see me doing that, but here it comes anterior to the malleolus, anterior to the spleen channel, meets the spleen channel, still anterior. Now it crosses posterior, runs up the medial aspect of the thigh. And we have our kidney channel, which we will make black. Starts at the base of the little toe. Kidney one is just beneath the ball of the foot on the plantar surface of the foot. And then the channel comes up here, yes. Kidney two, right? Kidney three, four, five, and six. All right, kidneys associated with the water element, you know, so we like to call that little three, four, five, and six around the ankle right here, right, it's like a water wheel. Three, four, five, six, just below the, the medial malleolus. Then the channel runs up the posterior aspect of the leg. Then eight, meets the spleen channel. That's spleen six, san yin jiao, and then runs up the posterior medial aspect of the leg, spleen 10, popliteal fossa, right, quite posterior. And right here, right here, spleen six. Three sun above the medial, the prominence of the medial malleolus, posterior border of the tibia, and it is the junction of the liver, kidney, and spleen channels. Right? So we have effect on all three channels. Spleen nine. Yin Ling Guan, Yin Mound Spring. I should say that regarding spleen six, the name should be self-evident, right? <laughs> three-leg yin, the kidney, liver, and spleen channels all meet there. Those are the three-leg yin channels. Um, I shouldn't have to do too much explaining there. Okay, let us move on to spleen nine, Yin Ling, yin ling Guan, Yin Mound Spring. This is the water point the Hussey point of the spleen channel, foot tie in. It is on the lower border of the medial condyle of the tibia in the depression posterior and inferior to the medial condyle of the tibia. Lower border of the medial condyle of the tibia in the depression posterior and inferior to the medial condyle of the tibia. Resolves dampness. Notice that is bolded, right? This is a huge, huge point for uh, dealing with dampness. Dampness, right, as we say, is often internally generated by weakness of the spleen. And when dampness is generated, it's heavy. So it affects the lower part of the body first with signs like heaviness in the limbs, swelling, uh, edema, water retention, water on the, the, the joints, so this point is an excellent point for resolving dampness, particularly um, of the lower jowl, lower extremity. Let's move ahead just for a second so we can talk about that. Okay, we'll come back. Okay, so we have a little illustration here, yes? The three hussy points of the three-leg yin, right? Liver, kidney, and spleen, right? All water points, all dealing with accumulations of dampness. Spleen nine, the hussy point of the spleen channel, foot tie in, is going to deal with damp accumulation of the lower extremity. Liver eight is going to be more associated with dampness, damp heat in the genitals and genital region. And kidney 10 is going to be more associated with damp heat in the uh, urinary tract in the urinary system. So that's uh, one way we can think about those. 
and use them uh, in point prescriptions. And as we talk more later in the semester about the liver and kidney channel, we'll have more specific examples of how to use those. But right now, uh, good to note that uh, Spleen 9 will deal with dampness of the lower extremities, lower, lower jowl, lower burner. Right? Liver 8 will deal more with dampness and damp heat in the uh, genitals, genital system, uh, genital area. And kidney 10 will deal more with uh, dampness and damp heat in the urinary tract. But here is uh, Ying Ling Guan, spleen 9. Right. In the depression posterior and inferior to the medial condyle of the tibia. So resolves dampness as an action, benefits the lower burner, I just said, benefits urination, right? That's going to resolve dampness because sometimes dampness can obstruct urination and removes obstructions from the channel. Indicated for abdominal pain and distension, diarrhea, dysentery, uh, edema or swelling, jaundice, painful urination, uh, enuresis, which is nocturnal, uh, bedwetting generally is enuresis, not just noctoria, which is nighttime excessive urination, genital pain, and knee pain. Makes sense for knee pain. It's right there at the knee. The knee is said to resemble a hill or a mound. This point is the water point next to the knee. It can be seen as a spring beside a mound, the yin mound spring. Yang lingguan, yang mound spring, is gallbladder 34. And it is on the gallbladder channel, which is the lateral side of the lower extremity. And in a you know very similar um, level or location. They're kind of right on opposite sides of the lower of the leg from each other. So Yang Yin Mound Spring, Yin Ling Guan, right? The water point next to the mound or hill of the knee, spring beside a mound. And as such it resolves dampness, right? It helps to move things through. Big, big point for dampness. Can't say that enough, and this is a point you I think you'll do, use a lot as well in in your um, practice. Spleen fifteen, da hung, big horizontal, da, as I think you're starting to learn, is big, great. Da hung, big horizontal. This is a point on the yin linking vessel, the yin wei mai, one of the extraordinary vessels. Extraordinary vessels. It's force on lateral to the center of the umbilicus, lateral to the rectus abdominis. Force on lateral to the center of the umbilicus puts it two on lateral to stomach 25. Strengthens the spleen, strengthens the limbs, resolves damp, regulates chi, stops pain, and regulates the large intestines. Makes sense because it is, in fact, right in the area of the large intestine. It's indicated for abdominal pain and distension, diarrhea, constipation, there you're regulating the large intestine, and dysentery. Large horizontal is referenced to the large intestine, because the point lies over the large intestine, and is horizontal to stomach 25, which is the front moo point of the large intestine. Right. Also lies in the neighborhood of the horizontal crease of the abdomen, where if you bend forward, Right, you may see a, a crease there as well. But horizontal to stomach 25 in the area of the large intestine, right? Large, big, horizontal. Spleen 21, da bao, great embracement. This is the great luo of the, of the spleen and in the exit point. Remember, there's a branch from here that meets the heart channel at heart one. On the mid axillary, line, six sun below the axilla, on a point midway between the axilla and the free end of the 11th rib. Peter Debman states that this happens to correspond with the seventh intercostal space, or the space between the seventh and eighth ribs. Moves blood in the connecting vessels. That's its action. Right? We also talked about uh, 
it collecting blood from all of the other connecting vessels. It's indicated for pain in the chest and hypochondriac region, asthma, aching, weakness, fullness in the chest, lethargy. Da is a reference to the fact that this is the great luo of the spleen. Ba refers to the fact that this luo mai spreads across the chest. Right? It's a great embrace, great spreading, great whole, you know. We look at the picture, it wraps right around the chest. And as I mentioned earlier, a function of Dabao is to gather the chi and blood of all of the other Lubomai. So just remember the functions of the spleen, the zong itself, right? Dominating transportation and transformation of essential materials, right? The, the chi of grain, fluids, controls the blood and dominates the first stage of creation of blood, the formation of blood. It holds blood in the vessels, holds the organs in place, dominates the muscles and the limbs, opens into the mouth, dominates the sense of taste. So when you think about those functions, we can think globally about the functions of the points on the channel as having an effect in either treating the failure of the transportation and transformation function right, which can lead to digestive complaints, treating dampness because of the spleen's relationship to dampness. Dampness can cause obstruction, which can lead to chi stagnation. So distension, bloating, pain, swelling. Points can tonify chi and blood because of the spleen's association with those substances. Uh, and again, because of the association with those substances, it can help resolve stasis. You can treat prolapse, calming and regulating the spirit, and treating certain disorders of the genitals, again, because of its association via the sinew channel to that area. And that concludes our lecture five on spleen channel of foot tie-in. I will see you in class.